Um, it was certainly, it was back in December, uh, where I remember reading in a, I think it was in, in one of the, the newspapers about this court case uh, in San Francisco. Uh, we hear about court cases all the time, and we hear about jury verdicts all the time, and those don't uh, raise any eyebrows. What raised some, what, what caught my personal attention was a finding by a jury um, of fraud. Um, and that, when, when I saw that, I said, what's here? To be honest, that put us in a very difficult situation. I mean, I, I don't want to be sitting there reading uh, the New York Times, the Washington Post, um, and have to find out what a company is doing or whether documents uh, exist. We, uh, once we had evidence that there was uh, documents like uh, that, that, that did raise questions, uh, we went uh, full speed ahead. Um, we, uh, that day, uh, we send people in uh, to get those documents. Those documents, they, they were Federal Express. I, re I remember they arrived in my home. It was a Friday. They arrived in my home, Federal Express, the next day. Uh, we spent a lot of time looking at uh, um, uh, those documents. It's far, they're, they're different systems. You know, they're, they're, they're very different systems that are established. Um, let me let Margaret Porter talk about her views as, as counsel. Um, on how we can better, uh, you know, coordinate those two systems. I guess what I would say uh, is that uh, I have a concern when protective orders are used to prevent individuals uh, from bringing information to the FDA as a regulatory agency to carry out its regulatory functions. As Dr. Kessler indicated, the private tort liability system and the FDA regulatory system are separate systems, and protective orders may be used appropriately in certain circumstances in private litigation. I don't, and I wouldn't want my comments to be construed otherwise. But I do have a concern when, if it happens that the agency is prevented from getting the information it needs. Is there any legal instrument or is there any change in law that might be recommended that could, again, with the overriding and compelling concern being women's health uh, without prejudicing whatever that ongoing case may be uh, so that this information sooner rather than later can be made available to the regulatory Smith, people like yourself. Let us look and think a little right. about that. I think it is, it is an important question. Understand it was one of the most difficult issues. Here I was uh, confronted with all this information but I couldn't talk about it because it was under a protective order. Now, we, what we did, and what the agency has done on a number of instances, um, we went into court. But it put us in a very difficult uh, position. Uh, people and legitimately said, you know, where's the beef when we did the moratorium? But I was not going to violate uh, a protective order. The, the, the process for lifting the protective order is a process that we went through. It took some time. Uh, but I think that we do need to give some thought about whether it could be done any better. If you could stay in contact with our committee, both the chairwoman and myself, uh, and other members of the committee, it would be most helpful on, on that particular point. Um, I was wondering if uh, uh, Mrs. Sh